Hello, I'm Kurt Sigmund, Chair of the, of the 2020 Hypertension Scientific Sessions Program Committee. I'm joined here by Dr. Daichi Shimbo, Chair of Clinical Programs for the Council on Hypertension, and Dr. Vivek Bala, past Chair of the Council on Kidney and Cardiovascular Disease. Well, the 2020 conference has concluded, and I think it's been a great success. I've been really impressed by the quality of the presentations and in particular, the engagement of the attendees and speakers in the chat box. So I'm gonna ask you each of what you thought were highlights of the meeting. Uh, for me, the session on the renin and angiotensin system in COVID-19 was really illuminating. Uh, Dr. Daniel Battier gave a really a tour de force on ACE2, uh, the SARS uh, coronavirus 2 receptor including evidence that truncated forms of the protein could be used as a decoy to inhibit cell entry by SARS coronavirus 2. And Dr. Jordi Cohen provided an overview of some of the controversies which arose early in the relationship of hypertension, antihypertensives, particularly blockers of the renin and angiotensin system, um, and COVID-19. She gave a great talk discussing the weight of initial clinical evidence uh, suggesting that RAS inhibitors increase ACE2, which could potentially uh, influence the severity of COVID-19, and which, as you all know, led to the early media fury on antihypertensives, which target the RAS. She discussed ongoing clinical trials on RAS blockade and COVID-19, and I, you know, I'm, I'm taken by one of her messages was that we really have to be careful to in, interpret current evidence cautiously and carefully review uh, study designs. Uh, Dr. Shimbo, what stood out to you? Thank you, Dr. Sigmund. Um, in addition to the session that you brought up, I really enjoyed the debate that took place on Thursday about whether we should be lowering nighttime blood pressure with bedtime dosing uh, with antihypertensive medications. This is a hotly contested area um, this is a, a topic that's been discussed very intently in the literature and also by very outspoken critics, whether indeed we should change the current practice of giving meds during the day and then switching them to the nighttime period to lower cardiovascular risk amongst those who have hypertension and who are on antihypertensive medications. It was a tour de force uh, session. It was first led by Dr. Marwa Abdallah, who is at Columbia University Medical Center. She gave a ground rounds like case discussion and then also went through the uh, current and past evidence in this area. It's a really nice summary, which then teed up the debate from uh, Dr. Ramon Hermida, who is an international expert in this area. He's published the most studies on nocturnal dosing of antihypertensive medications. His most recent publication was called the Hygieia trial, which was published in the European uh, Heart Journal, uh, which basically showed that nighttime dosing versus daytime dosing of antihypertensive meds lowered the risk of cardiovascular events and mortality. And he's been a, a, a particular leader in this area. So he gave the pro-debate. He uh, lined, outlined the rationale, why the data were so important, and then what the next steps were. And we then heard the con argument against bedtime dosing by Dr. Swapnir Hiramath from Ottawa, Ontario. And he's been an outspoken critic uh, about whether it's really ready for prime time. And he outlined the fact that some of the evidence looked like that it needed to be reproduced by others. In addition, he also questioned um, what kind of mechanisms were involved in the benefit that was seen in bedtime dosing. There was also a response back and forth uh, between the pro and uh, con side. And then it was a really interesting discussion between the speakers, uh, the moderator, which was Jordana Cohen, and as well as a very interactive chat box. And so it was just a wonderful session where the audience members were lively debating the issue. The speakers themselves were involved in that discussion while the debate was ongoing. And so I, I, that was one of my favorite sessions. Dr. Bala, how about yourself? What did you really enjoy? Thank you, Dr. Shimbo, and thank you, Dr. Sigmund. Uh, I first wanted to uh, quickly give a shout out to the other members of our program committee for the planning of this virtual conference, and also the AHA staff, which put in a tremendous amount of hard work and dedication to put this together. 
I also want to particularly thank the speakers as presenting in a virtual format is new, new for all of us. Uh, the sessions that both of you mentioned, I thought were particularly good for the reasons you brought up. I also wanted to highlight one other session that we had, uh, which was a kidney and cardiovascular disease symposium on blood pressure genetics 2.0, looking beyond monogenetic investigation. We had three speakers for this session. We had Adriana Hung from Vanderbilt University, Tanika Kelly from Tulane University, and Dr. Tu Thu Li from the University of Rochester. Uh, Dr. Hung's talk was particularly interesting because she used uh, the Million Veterans Program and GWAS studies from that and other collaborating studies to look and identify new variants for blood pressure and used two additional techniques to really unearth new and interesting relationship with blood pressure. One was that she was able to utilize single cell RNA sequencing uh, data to identify that some of these genes identified in the SNP studies were localized or enriched in particular segments of the kidney. The second was the ability to use uh, drug and gene interactions to identify that there are some variants that have particular uh, interactions with certain drugs that are already in clinical use and therefore drug repurposing um, could be applied to blood pressure. So I thought that talk was particularly interesting and the techniques that were used were also um, very enlightening. I thought Dr. Kelly's talk was very good as well. Dr. Kelly spoke about uh, ways to utilize data from the Gen Salt study, which was a study of uh, thousands of individuals from China uh, that underwent uh, genetic uh, mapping, as well as um, clinical studies of salt sensitivity and potassium sensitivity. She was able to apply a genetic risk score to, um, to, to, to essentially um, uh, develop um, to, to develop an outline of how that risk score interacted with salt sensitivity and potassium sensitivity, and she came up with some results that were unexpected. And I think that's going to lead to new and interesting hypotheses of how we interpret salt sensitivity and potassium sensitivity, particularly re with regards to inherited forms of hypertension, but also with regards to genetic um, variants and hypertension. The third talk, lastly, was by Dr. Thu Lee from the University of Rochester, and I really enjoyed her talk. Dr. Lee went through a story that spanned uh, over two decades, looking at a particular gene uh, in the role of hypertensive renal disease. She first started with, started with genetic mapping uh, in rodents by positional cloning and identified a gene called GSTM1. Uh, that gene was then further showed in humans to uh, be accompanied by a SNP variant, which was uh, caused the G GSTM1 deletion. And she was able to show that that deletion was associated with hypertensive renal disease in two different um, clinical studies, as well as an interaction with APOL1. She then went back to the bench and knocked out GSTM1, was able to show that deletion of that gene led to hypertensive renal disease. Then she went further and showed that there are certain uh, antioxidants which can ameliorate that type of renal disease, particularly in the deleted variants. So she was able to go from positional cloning in rats to humans and back to mice to outline uh, a way to, to do personalized medicine for a very common condition. So that symposium for me was particularly interesting, and I welcome all our audience members to check it out on demand. Well, as we close uh, Hypertension 2020, I want to remind uh, everybody watching that the entire conference will be available on demand for the next 90 days. So if you miss something or want to hear it again or spend some time with the posters, the content is all available. And of course, we all hope to see you at 2021 Hypertension Scientific Sessions, whether in personal or virtual. Thank you, stay safe, and stay healthy.